Hey guys, this is Pete Hartnett from Tulip with another quick tip. I'm going to show you how to transition between two different apps and importantly pass data between those two apps. So if you wanted, you know, for example, an app for each position in your facility and you wanted to do different behavior in one of the apps based on something they'd selected in another app, this is a super powerful way to do that. So I've got an example app here. Um, the thought essentially there's a work instruction hub. Um, they can select their work instruction and then it goes to any number of different apps. Um, and loads information about those work instructions. So I'll run this real quick and kind of show you what it looks like. So again, they can select say work instruction five and click load work instruction. It's actually gonna load information from a table about that work instruction. And they always can click back to hub here. So this is really pretty straightforward to do. Kind of show you what the flow looks like. Um, the important thing to know is we've got to keep track of which record ID they actually want to load when they transition to that other app. So the first step is going to be to save that record ID to the user table. The second step is going to be actually transitioning from one app to the other. And the third step will be loading that record back based on that ID in the user table. Something you might not be aware of, if you come to your Tulip instance, click on your little head there and click settings, and then come down to this user tab and custom fields. This is actually a table you can use um, and you can add fields to it if you want to. Um, the big thing to know is, you know, I've added a field here called work instruction ID, which is where we're going to keep track of which ID they actually want to load when they transition to apps. So you can see we tested with work instruction five and so it's there. And this works like any other table. So you can always delete these, you could add additional records, so on and so forth. So let's hop into our app editor. Um, and I'll show you, I've made a work instruction hub and a work instruction viewer app. They're totally blank right now. I just, you know, created basically base templates and we'll do the hub first. Something else to note is I've got this table right now that we're going to be referencing that's got some example work instructions with basic processes and departments and the amount of time needed. But obviously you could you could use whatever resource you want. So we're going to work on the hub app. And when we're interacting with a table, we always need a, a table record placeholder. Um, so we'll select our table and we'll create a placeholder and we'll call this current work instruction. That'll allow us to actually select our table when we're using it. So we'll click embedded and we're going to put an interactive table here where they can actually select which work instruction they want to load. From the data sources, we're going to select a tulip table. We'll select which table, which is work instructions, and we'll select our record placeholder. We can select which columns we want them to see. The ID is the, the document number. Uh, we definitely want the document name. We might want the doc, the department too. Um, and you kind of reorder these guys. So you could always put the department first if you want to. And obviously you can resize these columns. So I'm gonna take this, the name column and make it big enough that we can actually see the full name. And we'll adjust this little guy. Um, this app's kind of ugly, but it'll be functional. Um, and it'll kind of show you the concept. So we're gonna have a button that's actually gonna transition us between apps. Um, and we'll call that load work instruction. And if we remember back to that flowchart, there's a few things we need to do. The first one is actually to take um, kind of the currently loaded ID and put that into that user table I just showed you. Um, we'll call this transition apps. Um, one thing we want to check is to make sure that the user has actually selected something from that table. If they haven't selected anything, it won't know which record to load in the second app. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to do table record. We're going to pick our record placeholder. And if that ID uh, is blank, then let's show them an error message, show error, and we'll just show them a static message saying, hey, you need to, um, you need to select or construction to load it. Um, please select a work construction to load. Um, if they have successfully selected it, then we need to do our steps. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a data manipulation store. The data we're going to store is that table record our placeholder, um, its ID, and we're going to store that to that user table, the currently logged in user, um, and work instruction ID. So now we've basically taken the one they selected, taken its ID, stored it to that user table, and then we actually need to transition apps. So we're going to click app, we're going to do complete app, then change to step, we're going to pick our work instruction viewer app, and we're going to pick view work instruction, the step we want to go to. Sweet, so this app should be good to go. Um, if we go back and build our viewer app, and again, we come in and edit. Again, we're interfacing with the same table, so we need a table record placeholder. We'll pick our table, and we'll create a placeholder for it called current work instruction. 
Sweet. So we're going to display that that placeholder. It's just going to display the information that's in that table, basically. And we can adjust this guy, adjust the size to fit what we want. Um, and the big thing to know is when we enter this app, we actually want to load that record in. So on step enter, we'll load record. And to load a record, we need to know what ID we're going to actually load. Um, and that's going to come from that user table. So we're going to load record. We're going to load it into the current work instruction record placeholder. And that ID is going to come from the user table, current logged in user, and work instruction ID. Sweet. Only other thing we need is a button to get back to the hub. Go back to our construction hub. We'll adjust the size on this a little bit, a little easier to see. And the actions this has to do is just a transition. Um, shoot, it'll be app. And again, it'll be completions, then go to step. We'll pick our app we want to go to. And we'll pick the main screen. We'll call this trigger, go back to hub. Sweet, now we can test this real quick. So we have to go to the hub and click run. And click begin. If we pick our work instruction, say work instruction three and click load work instruction. You can see we've successfully pulled all this information. And if we click on the hub, we come back to this main page. We can verify that we're actually writing to that user table by just clicking one of these guys and clicking load. So we just selected work instruction seven. And if I come back to that user table, we can see we have actually passed that information. So everything's working the way we expect it to. Hope this helps. Thanks guys.